NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell is like every other human. He's done great things but has made some big mistakes. However, the man with an insanely hard job also hasn't used common sense in a lot of his situations. I'm Justin Fraction, and today we take a look at 10 reasons why we hate Roger Goodell. And a big thank you to Cameron Roberts for suggesting this video. Number 10, 2012 Replacement Refs Must we really go on? The brief NFL referee lockout to kick off the 2012 season was embarrassing. The NFL wouldn't pay its officials and the college refs stood by the NFL pinstripes, so they refused to come up. The NFL had to hire guys who had regular jobs such as school teachers. Though they only lasted three weeks, nobody will forget when they gave the Seattle Seahawks that ridiculous touchdown call to win on Monday Night Football against the Green Bay Packers. Number 9. And still not fixing the officiating Ever since the NFL brought back its officials, the officiating has been awful. Literally no one except Dean Blandino seems to know what a catch is anymore. Also, why are guys being called for roughing the passer when they barely touch a guy? Yet much of the time when guys like Cam Newton get smoked in the head, the rest don't notice it nor call it. Holding occurs on almost every play, but officials only seem to call it if it negates a big play. And not to mention, guys can barely play defense anymore. Seriously, if a receiver trips on his own, how often do we see corners get called for pass interference? Yet when guys like Richard Sherman hold guys and drag them down, it's not a penalty half the time. Fix the officiating, please. Roger that. Number 8. The Dallas Cowboys on Prime Time To be honest, we're not too sure if Goodell actually decides which games do and don't go on prime time. But we know he has the power to stop putting the Dallas Cowboys on so many prime time games every season. Look, we know it's America's team, but 90% of NFL fans aren't Cowboys fans. There are 31 other NFL teams that want to play on Sunday nights or Monday night. Why do the Cowboys get all the primetime slots? Come on, Roger, you're not supposed to be biased. Don't let this one team take up all the primetime games. Number 7. Your Honor, Goodell Goodell should have lots of power, but there's no way he should have all the power to be the judge, jury, and executioner. In the NHL, Gary Bettman is the commissioner, but Stefan Kital is the main guy in charge of player safety. But Goodell, the NFL commissioner, gets to decide who is suspended for how long. Nobody else can influence him unless it goes to court and a judge says otherwise. Speaking of that, number 6. The Deflate Gate Scandal Because Tom Brady might have deflated football, so he was suspended for four games, while the Patriots received a hefty fine and lost a draft pick. Yes, the Patriots had deflated footballs in that AFC Championship game against the Indianapolis Colts, but there's no concrete proof that Brady did anything. Even if Brady did do it, why would this whole thing drag on for a year and a half? Us NFL fans wanted to pay attention to more exciting events in the offseason, but this clogged the ESPN, CBS, NFL.com, and USA Today headlines for ages. And it only involved the Patriots. Most of us couldn't care less. Number 5. Poor Handling of Spygate If there was one time Goodell should have thrown the book at the Patriots for breaking rules and integrity, it was the 2007 Spygate scandal. According to sources, which include former Patriots coaches, NFL players, and other employees, this team was spying on opponents, bugging locker rooms, and stealing play calls before they won their first Super Bowl to kick off a dynasty. And other sources have said that Goodell had full knowledge, but chose to smash the videotapes because he didn't want to ruin the legacy of the NFL's model organization. Allow us to assume this is true. How is this something worth covering up? But Deflategate is worth taking to court over and over and over again. We'll never know. Number 4. Bounty Gate In case you forgot, the New Orleans Saints ran a Bounty Gate scandal during the 2000s before being caught in 2011. Defensive coordinator Greg Williams was telling players to intentionally injure others. If they hurt someone, they got paid for it. But for some reason, Sean Payton was suspended for a full season, even though there wasn't much evidence that he was a central figure in the scandal. Many Saints players got suspended, draft picks were lost, and other personnel faced suspensions. But why was Peyton suspended a full year? Yet, Bill Belichick didn't deserve any suspensions for his scandals. Either both coaches should be suspended for running these scandals, or no coaches. We think neither should have. Number 3. The Concussion Problems It's not Goodell's fault that concussions happen and are part of the game. It is his fault for not taking enough action to help stop them. Giving a guy a 15-yard penalty and fining millionaires just a few grand for ugly headshots isn't enough. If you want to ban concussions, part of the solution could be to really scare guys into stopping the headshots. The NFL hasn't done its job helping retired players get the help they need either. Concussion issues are getting worse, and part of this has to fall on the commish. Number 2. No Fun League People love Chad Johnson and Terrell Owens for A. Their incredible play and B. Their insanely awesome touchdown celebrations. But now in the NFL, a guy can get penalized and slashed or fined for scoring a touchdown. Seriously, 
A guy shooting a bow and arrow is encouraging violence, according to Goodell. Guys who spend their whole lives trying to make it to the NFL can't celebrate if they score a touchdown. There has to be some fun in sports, but Goodell doesn't allow it. It's like having that teacher that said no laughing in class. And number one, the Ray Rice saga. Ray Rice was a Super Bowl champion running back on the Baltimore Ravens, but an ugly video came out of him viciously assaulting his fiancée and dragging her through an elevator. For that, he was given a two-game suspension. A two-game suspension for brutally attacking your woman? Really? And some NFL players get all these lengthy suspensions for smoking marijuana, which is even weirder in the U.S. since many places now are legalizing recreational marijuana in small amounts. Goodell himself admitted he could have given a worse punishment. This is not a good way for the NFL to show its stance on stopping violence against women. Goodell's legacy took a huge hit for this incident. How do you feel about Roger Goodell? Join us in the comments below. If you like this video and learned a thing or two, clicking the like button helps us out a ton and we appreciate it. If this is your first time coming around to Total Pro Sports though, subscribing is a great idea because we put out videos like this every single day. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.